for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. I see these political signs around me. I'm here to tell you to choose Jesus Christ as your Savior. He's the one. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, but by the... I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ, the way, the only way to heaven, religion, works, nothing else can get you to the Father but by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I'm the truth. We all know about politics and politicians. They'll lie to get your vote. Your vote. They'll lie to get you in a particular office. But Jesus Christ is never. God is recorded in the Bible never and will never be able to lie to you. He's always true. Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is true. And he's the life. Christ came to give you life. He paid the penalty that you may eternal eternal life that you may be saved. He paid the penalty. You can't pay it. That's why Christ came down. That's why Christ came. To do what you cannot do. Now I'll be turning to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4. How you doing? Mark chapter 4. Verse 14, describing the parable of the sower that the Lord Jesus Christ tells his disciples what the uh, parable means. He says, The sower soweth the word. Oh, you look early, it says in verse 3, Behold, there went out a sower to sow. Here we are in a farmer's market, and I'm planting seeds, seeds of the gospel, the word of God. I'm going to tell you, folks, what your reactions will be to the gospel. According to the gospel in Mark chapter 4, how you will react. Here's a place that has many seeds inside its fruit. And here is these seeds. Here is the reason why I'm here preaching to you, to give you the seed. The Word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Gospel, how that He died, was buried, and arose again the third day that you may have eternal life. The seed is the Word. The King James 6011 Bible that I'm holding and reading from. I am planting this Word into your heart whether you like it or not. Because as you hear these words, you will stand before God and will not have an excuse. Because you are hearing the words now. The Bible says in Acts chapter 16, verse 30, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And these are they, these are they that by the wayside, where the word was sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and take away the word that was sown in their heart. There are some of you out there who are going to disregard thinks I'm a fool, going to reject what I'm telling you about Jesus. Satan has come along. Satan is here right now, and he's taking his word, and he's blocking it from your ears, from your heart. He does not want the seed to be planted because it may germinate. And the germination will be believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation and rejecting You better believe there's a Satan. But Satan is not in the beer hall. Satan is not in bed with an adulteress. Satan is right where the word is and people who preach the gospel, that's where Satan is. He does not want you to hear the word. They'll give you distraction. They'll give you anything but Jesus Christ. And these are likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it gladness. Some of you are glad that we are here. Some of you, hey, that sounds good. Great. Good news. Good tidings. I like that. And have no root in themselves. So endure but for time afterwards when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake. It 
me, they're offended. Some of you are born-again Bible-believing Christians, and you fear to do what we do, but the Bible proclaims in Mark chapter 16, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. You are commanded by God to preach the gospel, Christians, not to hide in your little lairs and be secret Christians and spy Christians. You're saved, but the cares and the, and the uh, problems you raise by being a Christian makes you fall away. Somebody told you something you didn't like. The preacher preached a message about you, and you turned away, and you left the Lord. You can't leave the Lord for salvation, but you can leave the Lord in your walk, and you'll not get any reward. You'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ as a loser. Christian, speak up. Witness about the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't care about politicians. Don't care about the government. Don't care about the world. Who cares where there's war? Who cares where there's famine? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ is the message you are to hold and take. You're not going to fix this world up. This world will be fixed when Jesus comes. That will be the problem solver. Your job is not to fix the government. Your job is to go out there and witness the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of the problems of the world, because of the situations you fall into, your family hates you. You can't get that promotion, and you fall away. That is wrong. And I'm here to tell you that the judgment seat of Christ, you will face loss. Christ will deny you if you deny His name the right to reign in the millennium. The Bible will Christ. He won't reject that right of salvation. Once saved, always saved, that you may know you have eternal life. But if you deny Jesus, you the right to reign with Him. Christians, speak up about the gospel. Tell people. Open your mouth for Jesus. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things, enter in, and choke the word, and become unfruitful. All right, what's the cares of the world? What is that deceitfulness of riches? You'd rather be on the corporate ladder than be with Jesus. You'd rather be on a fishing boat on Sunday morning than to be in church and hearing the gospel being preached. You'd rather worry about money than souls. You'd rather spend more money on pet food than missionaries. It's when everything, money, credit, job, whatever it is that puts God in the background. I'll spend all my money on lottery tickets and give God $5 a year. That is wrong, and that is the seed that we're talking about right now. I have made so many bills in my life, I can't afford to go to church. I've got to have six jobs. Well, you're wrong. Because you're afraid now the Bible says you're to be responsible with your money. And the problem is you got in with your money because you didn't do what the Bible says. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Why are you preaching on the street like you are? You are offending people. No, the Bible says that some seed will germinate into salvation, and that seed will produce other seeds, which will produce other seeds. I am here because somebody witnessed to me back in April 1987 about the Lord Jesus Christ, and I received Him as my Savior. I stand here and tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ, that you may receive Him as your Savior. And some of you, some of the work that we do, some of the street preaching that others do, passing out gospel tracts, knocking on your front doors, 
not as Jehovah Witnesses, but as born again Bible believing Christians, some of that seed will germinate and you will trust Christ as your Savior. That is why we stand here. Do we look for 100% results? Absolutely not. I just read to you seeds that did not produce nothing. I read to you seeds that became a plant and did nothing. And I read to you seeds that were planted, germinated, and produced other fruit. In Mark chapter 4, it tells you that's right. We will not see all of you get saved. Not at all. But it tells me that one and four or five chances that a seed will germinate. And Christian... One of them seeds is you became a tree, you became a plant, but a plant that bears no fruit is absolutely worthless. And you'll stand at the judgment seat of Christ worthless. But if you are a plant for the Lord and produce seed in itself, and you put those seeds out, Lord will bless you, make you happy. The Lord will reward you with crowns at the judgment seat of Christ. Don't you realize that the Lord's coming, He's coming soon, that these people need to hear, these people need to be told, as the churches are failing in America, the churches are failing around the world, as they turn to worldly doctrines and worldly programs and everything else that has nothing to do with the gospel of Jesus. The Bible says that there's a famine coming, my folks. And the famine is not that you're not going to have fruit to buy at the fruit stand. It's not that kind of famine. The Bible says the famine is coming of the Word of God. You are entering into a period one day that the church will fill people. And you will have seven years of the Antichrist Satan sitting in Jerusalem reigning and ruling. And he'll give you a mark and only you can be buy and sell if you receive. And if you want to do right, you can't live. You can't live under Satan's rule if you don't do what he tells you to do. Right now we are in a period of grace by the church age that Christ died for your sins. And I'm telling you that the gospel is that Christ died for you. He was buried and he arose again the third day for you to have life and have life more abundantly. Life doesn't begin at 30. Life doesn't begin at 40. Life don't begin at 50. Life begins at Calvary's cross with your knees bent and you repenting and telling Jesus that you are a sinner for the Bible has said, for all have sinned and come to the shore of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. And as a sinner, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. People, without Jesus, you're going to hell. And you will burn in hell for eternity. For eternity. Think about a clock with no hands. And you will not get out. And you go to hell not because of your sins, but because you have rejected Jesus Christ as your Savior. The sin payment that He has done on Calvary for you, you have rejected. And you think it's through your own works. Your own works will be paid in hell. We're here to tell you about the truth. We're here to tell you about Jesus. I'm not here about religion. I'm not here about how good you are. I'm not here but to speak the blessed hope. The coming of our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, that you may believe on Him now, today. I will show you by the Word of God, and not tradition, not of my own will. I will show you in the King James Bible that I hold in my hand what you need to do to be saved. Scripture with Scripture. The Bible writes, First uh, John, that these things may, that you may know that you have eternal life. Do you know that you have eternal life and you are a hundred percent sure?
suffer the little children to come unto the Jesus. The, Jesus said, we didn't say unto Jesus, but suffer the little children to come unto me, Jesus said. It is your responsible parent to bring your children to Jesus. It is your responsibility to bring it to the right Jesus. Paul writes in Corinthians chapter 11 that there is another Jesus. There's a whole lot of Jesuses out there, my friends. But is it the Jesus that lines up with the Bible? All religions have Jesus. Heck, down Mexico, they named their boys Jesus. Well, that's not the Jesus of the Bible. Paul says that there's another spirit besides the Holy Spirit. You better have the Holy Spirit that is lined, that wrote, that inspired this Bible that I hold in my hand that you can hold. And Paul tells us in Corinthians chapter 11 that there's another gospel. There's gospel out there. You do good little jobs and go do good little works and whatever they promise you. That's a lie out of hell. That's a lie out of religion. That's a lie out of Satan. Because the Bible says, What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Not of works, least any man should boast. It's not what you can do. It is what Christ has already done. Christ has done what you cannot do. All you got to do is repent and ask Him to save you. It's that simple. Six-year-old, seven-year-old can do what you people refuse to do. Your pride, your comfort, your feelings, your fear, your job, your anything what you want to do but Jesus. You want to excuse me, but you're not going to excuse me because this is God's holy word. You may excuse me, but you'll not excuse the word for Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will never pass away. You look around, everything here is going to be gone one day. Peter says with a fervent heat, and the only thing that's going to last is the Bible and Jesus Christ. Your mother earth will burn. She'll burn good. How good are you people? You call her your mother and you walk all over her. Nice child. You call her mother up and you drive on her. You're a nice child driving over your mother. That's a real nice child to be walking on mother like that. But I tell you, Mother Earth will be gone and Jesus will be only one left. And if you do not have his blood, you do not have this gospel, you do not put your faith in Jesus Christ, you will be cast into the lake of fire for all eternity. Everything will be weighed out at the judgment. Your motives, your actions. I know Christians that will hold signs for their politicians, but they won't hold a sign for Jesus. They'll be too afraid to pass out a gospel tract for Jesus. Oh, oh, put some man in office. Oh, I gotta do that. That's more important. Why? That office will be gone one day. Jesus Christ will be coming for his church one day. That's what's important. This world can go to hell because that's exactly where it's going to go. It's going to get worse. That's going to get worse. This ain't the final part of this, this world, what it's going through. It's going to get worse. It defies evolution teaching. Evolution, everything's getting better and better and better. Well, go ask the public school teachers if everything's getting better and better and better. Back when my grandfather went to school, it was running in the hallways, chewing gum. Today you got AK-7s, you got shotguns in the schools. It ain't getting better! Because you have told Jesus, get out of the schools. You have told God, get out of the courtrooms. One of the people here is for a judge, and they don't want God in the courtroom. They don't want the Ten Commandments in the courtroom. Because you may offend the murderer. Tough! Sins are sins. They're not pretty little costume names. Shacking up is an adultery. It's fornication. You get 